Let me resume recording. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to One Million Cups. Um, Good morning. Our opener just took a phone call. So maybe, come on up, Adam. <laughs> so the phone was trying to come, so that's why. I, oh, good. That's why I went ahead and did that. Good morning, everybody. So uh, one million cups for those of you that don't know, and for those that are surprised you're here. Uh, we are an uh, entrepreneur-focused group that uh, wants to um, eliminate a lot of the barriers that get to actually making something happen. So one of the ways we do that is by counting. Um, maybe not money exactly at the moment, but people that are coming into this location. So if you can scan yourself in and join the group, the membership if uh, that you have to join or to log in is something we rarely send emails. In fact, we're having a hard time sending them. Um, so don't worry about a bunch of spam. Uh, we go ahead and log in. There's a QR code here, but there's also some papers around with them as well. And there we go. Okay, uh, mission uh, today, oh, so our mission is of course to uh, help entrepreneurs aspire to greater entrepreneuring and doing great things, starting businesses <laughs> and making them happen. Uh, this is national and local. So it was started in, where the Kauffman Foundation um, started, which is in Kansas. Uh, good, no one corrected me, so I must've got that right. Uh, <laughs> so- the city of Missouri. So in the city of Missouri. Yeah. In Kansas. No, no, in Missouri, Kansas City. Thank you. Okay, so there is actually a good correction there. So Kansas City in Missouri. So that's where it started. And it was just sort of a group of people uh, that were sharing ideas about what they wanted to make happen. And then they made it a big national movement through some series of events. And here we are. Um, we've got Albuquerque is the only one, uh, only city in New Mexico that's get, providing this. But the cool thing is because we're hybrid, you can log in anywhere from in New Mexico and join us and then think, wow, I could present and share my ideas with other folks. Um, and with sharing your ideas, it's the idea that we're not pitching our ideas, we're, we're sharing what we're trying to make happen and figuring out what kind of feedback we can get. So the great thing about this audience is we have lots of ideas out here. There's also lots of people that can get inspired. There's a reason I started my business was because I came to one of these and I said, well, I could probably handle that because people were talking about real problems they were dealing with as opposed to just stuff they're trying to give away and just sounding like they're so super intelligent, okay? Which is funny because super intelligent people actually ask good questions. So One Million Cups mission, um, here's a big lot of words that we say. This is, this is um, another mission, actually, I realized. This mission's mentioned twice, but this is more supposed to be our local, what? Local. Our local mission, yeah. Um, so... Uh, what can our community help do to help you is the big thing we're after. And uh, you don't have to do it alone is what we're really aiming for. So let's get to work. This is, um, this is a great way you can present your company, uh, especially if you're growing your company right now or changing it in some way. We like companies to be somewhere between the first and fifth year. And in addition, um, if you have income, even if it's a dollar from someone other than your family, then that is what we're after. We, we bend the rules with that a little bit. If you're like trying to do a startup and you have some sort of um, investment funding out there put into you. Um, but uh, the idea is that we want to share these ideas and keep the conversation going. We've not missed a week so far, um, except for planned holidays, even with COVID. We, we were that diligent and had great people coming in and presenting and other stuff. Like today, someone came in and presented, is presenting last minute, which we really appreciate. Sure. Yeah. Um, so these are our organizers. Paul Sauter has got his uh, Equisite DNA with horses. We've got Lisa here that runs Fat Pipe and makes so much happen here. She's our lead organizer. We've got um, Eric, who's doing sort of all sorts of ecosystems to build entrepreneurship in our community. Uh, there's me, who I focus on creative tension. And then we've got uh, Sonia Doing, who makes you get your stories out there. Hopefully not through phone thingy. Okay. Is she still lost? There she is. Can we give her directions? Um, that would be probably good in a moment, sure. All right, so there we are. And these are the people that are um, sponsoring us. Fat Pipe is the location and been hosting us for eight years. So we thank them. 
and Stu is usually in the group too. Um, Jason Collin Photography, he's usually here taking pictures and making us look good. More than organized is keeping our creamer going, keeping our coffee space organized and our, our uh, money flowing. So foundation for sustainable living is providing coffee from their um, organic location. No, not exactly right. Oh, what's what, what's more? He's detailed? our coffee sponsor, but <laughs> his farm. He he doesn't grow it in the U.S. So we buy the type of coffee that he um, grows, but you can't buy it directly from his farm. Correct. So. Oh, learning more and more. So Noventum Custom Software is bringing in our donuts, and uh, we've got uh, sponsors here. So Invive Solutions is also actually I'm not sure what Invive does. Uh, they're supposed to be our tea and healthy breakfast sponsor fruit, but only when they're here and they haven't been here. So, <laughs> so we're not getting tea or fruit Thanks for right now. Us. Guys. All right. So I'm sure a lot of you saw my plea on Facebook. Oh my God, we need presenters. We are trying to come up with other ideas, trying to figure out what to do this week. Um, and we were saved by the city of Albuquerque who sent said us to us with Timmy's Closet. I'm really excited about this presentation because it's all about fashion. And some of you who know me know that I friggin' love fashion. So <laughs> this will be fun for me to hear. Mercedes, let me just get to your... Um, oh. To your slide deck. Come on up. I will also give you. So when I um, press to let people in, sometimes I screw this up. So okay. if I touch the screen and your thing quits working, I'll try to pay attention and help advance you. Okay. And if I hit that, I go to it the next slide. Take you to the next slide. I hit this one. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, hi, everybody. Hi. I'm Mercedes. And um, hi. How are you? We have <laughs> lots of newbies in the room, which I'm really excited about. Um, so I am Mercedes Wharton. I am the owner of Timmy's Closet. And I am an image consultant, but I also like to call myself a style crusader. And so um, I'm going to tell you kind of what an image consultant does, because I don't know. But no, I feel like people don't really know. So I help the client elevate, improve, enhance, and update their look. And um, I want to share with you my story of how I got here, because uh, I would have never thought it would have been where I am right now. So it's about connection. And so I am um, in a connection group called Polka Dot Powerhouse here in town, and I was a founding member <laughs> of the chapter. And um, I was asked to be on leadership. And so um, each of us that when it's, we launched our chapter, each of us was asked to have a presentation to speak on for new members and future members. So I decided to speak on the positive power of getting dressed and talk about my fashion iconic parents. This is my mom and dad, Benny and Timmy. And they both have since passed, but I mean, how cool is that? And so I'm going to give you a little bit of the presentation I spoke that day so you can understand my journey of where I started and where I've come and who I am today. So um, my mom passed away when I was 12. So I didn't get the opportunity to really know her like most mother-daughter people, you know, get to know their parents. And my mom suffered depression. And so I was 12 when she passed away. And so I heard great stories from family members and saw pictures of my mom. So I feel like I did get to know her through a connection through photos. And she was an amazing dresser. She was like the marvelous Mrs. Maisel. This is my mom in the middle. And this is in Santa Fe. They used to do like paparazzi pictures and then give you the picture. <laughs> and so if you've seen the marvelous Mrs. Maisel, the show, you know it's all about the hat, gloves, shoes, everything matches the purse. And so she paid attention to detail and I can tell you, um, I wanted to feel the way she looked in photos. And so that is a way that I connected with my mom. Now, as for my dad, he was kind, positive, 
and outgoing and hilarious. And if he was here, he would say, if you don't believe me, ask me. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, he had a lot of loss in his life. So in an eight year period, he lost my mom of 31 years. I became a single dad of three girls, God bless him, ages 17, 15, and 12. Yeah, I know. And um, <laughs> he started dating, and then he met Irma, and they got married. She had three kids, he had three kids, and we became the Brady Bunch. Those mm -hmm. are my siblings. Unfortunately, Irma had cancer, got cancer, and she passed away. They were only married for five years. It's a lot, I know. And... So I left school and I came home. I was going to CNM now, TBI. I quit school, came home and got a job and lived with my dad. And what I learned from him was that he um, got up every day, had a good attitude, a positive attitude. Um, he put on clothes. He wore clothes that made him feel good and attacked the day. So when you do that, there's possibility, there's positivity, and there's opportunity. And so. I learned that just observing from him. And then I also knew that we knew we're, you know, we were together, we were, we were a team. And so not every day was going to be a great day, but we were gonna make the best of each day. So I realized after learning all that, that when you wear clothes that make you feel good, it sets the tone for the day and anything can happen. So I finished my presentation um, and my managing director, who you will know, Barbara Portsline, she um, walked up to me and she said, I can see you doing more. I can see you dressing people from head to toe. And at the time I was doing a direct sales business for a childhood friend, it was her business. And she said to me, I know you love your friend and you, I know you like her business. There is more for you out there. So I blew her off for a good two years because I was scared <laughs> due to fear. I was Definitely. scared, I wasn't gonna do it, but I kept getting, what I call shoulder taps, Google fashion stylist, Google this. image consultant came up. So from that point on, I left my direct sales job, went back to school and I launched Timmy's Closet at the end of July of 2019. So here's the struggle is real. I had a good seven months and then COVID hit. I will share with you my struggles. COVID <laughs> and embracing online. So I literally feel like I'm starting over uh, or relaunching, I guess you could say. But I feel like I have experience now rather than going, this is what I want to do. I hope you guys want to do it. Now I can say, this is what I've done, but I'm starting over. And then embracing online, having virtual clients. That's my other struggle. Um, I'm a people person and I've done it. It's totally doable. I know it's an opportunity. I need your guys' help to help me rethink or set me down a path or just give me conversation. So I'm open to that. Um, I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak today. Um, and I'm open to whatever you guys have to say. And here's my information. And thank you. Awesome. I'm going to start off questions when you come up here or when we pick up from you online, give us your name and tell us who you're with and then ask your question. So I'm Lisa Adkins, COO of the Fat Pipe Co-working Network and the Bioscience Center. Timmy, how do you make money? So, um, so I make money. I called you Timmy. Oh, that's says, right. how do you make money? So I have, um, so like, I have packages. I have a website. Um, I talk to people about what I do. I um, recently just left, but I worked at a consignment shop and um, I collaborate with them with my business and their business. So people that come into the store get to know me and can hire me through the store. Um, but literally putting my boots on the ground and talking to people is what I'm doing. So do you charge to talk to them? Do you? I usually will do, uh, if somebody's really interested, let's say you're like, okay, I wanna know more. I will say, let's have a conversation because I want to know if we are a right fit, definitely. I mean, I, I could dress you, but if you're not, I want people, I set my intention for people that really want to do the change. And if they're there, then it happens. Um, but I wanna make sure that we're both on the same page. 
So yeah, I do a conversation one first. Great. Lana. Hello. Hi. Miriam Ortiz Pino with More Than Organized. Um, do you have a, like a signature way you deliver your service? Like, do you have a series of steps you take every single client through so that it becomes efficient and effective? And yes, or do you just wing it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's not in the beginning, I probably did. Yeah. But now that um, I'm getting back into what I'm doing, um, I am literally writing every step that I do, so it is consistent. Okay. So then I can see what people are. So we have a conference. So first thing, I'm going to meet meet them virtually or in person. And we're going to have a conversation to see if we fit. Then I'm going to give them an application to apply and see if they want to want to hire me. And then I go through the process of what I do after that. Perfect. Yep. Awesome. Now we've got Sue online. Sue, would you like to ask your question? Hi, Mercedes. I'd like to understand how you're marketing your company, yourself. Um, who's really your target audience? Okay, so I, I would say my target audience is the person that's ready to take that step in what they want to change. We're in COVID. Things are totally different. The way we dress is totally different. So. Um, I ask people, are you working at home? Are you hybrid? My husband's hybrid. Um, are you, have you always been working from home? Like, I wanna know what they do, do, who they are, what they do outside of work to, to figure out what, how I can address them and help them. So um, there's that. And I think you asked how I was how marketing. You market. Yes. Um, literally, this is me starting to market now. <laughs> so, so. Yes, I, um, I'm getting back out there and speaking and talking to people. So um, that's kind of where I'm at. So yes, any advice on that would be great. Excellent. Uh, I'm our friends Whitmore, one of the organizers of this organization or this, uh, this, this fun little event. Um, and I can partially answer the question, but I'm wondering, so let's say I come in and I don't necessarily have a whole vision for where, where I want to be. Will you sort of lead us through kind of a conversation that, that heads us in a direction? Yes. How, okay. I often ask people um, and to think about this. When you walk into a room or you sit down to Zoom, what do you want your image to say about you? I don't want you to not be the person you're meant to be, but what do you want to say about you when you walk into a room? Do you want to be confident, approachable? Like those are all things we want because mm -hmm. we can't help it. When we see somebody, we look them up and down. Our brain is like trying to figure out yeah, who they are. And so that is um, something that I will ask. Because three years ago, you may have been dressing up every single day for work mm -hmm. to the nines, right? And now we're COVID. So how, how do you want to um, that to work with what you do? Yeah, looks like Sonia's got a tip or something online. Sonia. <clears throat> Okay, sorry, I was looking at your Facebook page. Um, all right, so uh, number one, I think a great target for you might be um, targeting people with life changes on Facebook, which you can actually target ads to, at least you used to be to, able to target someone who just got married or engaged or moved or- New job. Got a new job, right? Um, I think those would be great targets for people for what you do. Okay. And, and my other suggestion would be, I love the photo of your mom at the top of your business page, but I don't, because I don't know the story, I don't know why it's there. So I feel like replacing that with either a video or a picture of someone's closet or something more like specific. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. And that's what I got. Good luck, Timmy. All right, okay. Mercedes, sorry, Mercedes. Okay. It's I know, it's <laughs> or whatever. Thing. Do you have another suggestion? Are you, is that me? Um, yeah, go ahead. Mercedes, if I'm understanding this correctly, you're mostly targeting women. And if that- uh, I have had male clients. I have had male clients. Oh, okay. One of my suggestions are, there are some amazing women's groups here that you could um, join, like women in leadership and other such groups, and um, get in front of them. Okay, it's a great idea. I know my um, my dress has changed a lot since COVID, 
we bought a new house right before COVID and Johnny built me this, this room with a wall, all for shoes. And I probably wear four pair of them now. Mm -hmm. Just not into it anymore. Yeah, so what do you think? Would you be, so like, I like to, um, I like for people to shop in their closet. I like being sustainable. And so like, when's the last time you guys looked, I mean, even the guys, when's the last time you've looked in your closet? Do you have that one pair of jeans that you always wear? I have two pairs of jeans. I have, I have a lot of clothes, but I have two pairs of jeans that I know I'm always going to wear. I'm not going to buy another pair of jeans because um, it's white. I'm going to just keep going to the same two pair. It's, it's, uh, it just, you want to think about cost per wear. And, and even just looking at jewelry yesterday, I was, my cat knocked down my jewelry stand. So I was like, Darn it. so I had to put everything in order, but then I was like, why am I not wearing this? Ooh, I should try to put this in a look together. So think of clothes too, as like, what have I not worn lately? And why not level it up just a bit? I had a girlfriend in college who would take pictures of all of her outfits and then cycle them through. So oh. she was sure not to wear the same outfit more and <laughs> more than once in a month. Mm. It's crazy. She was really well, and you look at the the royals, Princess Catherine. She's known, and people love it that she will wear one dress multiple times. Yeah, because she's being sustainable. She's not getting more, more, and more, and more, and more. So that's something to think about too. How can you make your wardrobe last? It doesn't have to be. You can wear it. What I did a, a on my Instagram, I did a reel where I did one shirt with three different jackets, and one uh, top that was kind of loud. And so it's like shows you I could wear that shirt every day for five days and nobody would know. Yeah. Because I'm wearing a different jacket. So those are things to think about. Sonia, we'll come back. Let's have Jenny ask her question. Hi, Hi. Jenny from Restoration Occupational Therapy. Um, clothing is really expensive right. and inflation is going up. Do you do anything with like reusable clothes? Yeah. Thrift stores and stuff like that? Yes. So I, I just left what goes around. So I work mm -hmm. through what goes around. And um, they were looking to hire somebody and I was like, I'll help. So um, I ended up leaving because um, my business started to pick up a little bit. So um, I love, my jacket is from what goes around. My earrings are from what goes around. Would you guys have known? Mm -hmm. No, I am telling you um, consignment uh, is the things that I saw come in were brand new with tax. Some people have, um, some people have passed away. Um, there was a lady that was going into assisted living and she was a realtor, brand new stuff with, with, um, tags. So definitely if there's a way to be sustainable, I would highly recommend. Um, I think there's, I, I know what goes wrong well, because I worked there and I worked through there. Um, but there are other consignment stores. There's one in Santa Fe. Um, and so definitely Even there's thrift stores. thrift stores. There are, there's the fancy, um, Goodwill over off the of Alameda. There is stuff in there. My purse is from what goes around. And it's, do you do you put that in your marketing? I have not, but that is I something. I, would I mean, I do that. talk about it, um, but that's something that I want to do. People uh, know me through what goes around. Know that I like to be sustainable. So, and are you targeting your groups, all age groups, or? Um, I would say. From what I've seen, it's mostly people. I'm fit and do professionals. Yeah, and so I've seen people that are more my age, um, but I have worked with, you know, people that are younger in their thirties. I I don't see age as a thing. I want people to. I say I want you to embrace who you are in this moment, um, and um, I want you to be able to express who you are. Um, and clothing <laughs> is a tool that tells the story. So you're expressing who you are and telling a story, and your story can be different every single day by what you wear. And so that's what I want for people. And I want them to look in their closet. And what's not in there, what's not in there that you're not using, that can go to consignment. So good luck. Thanks. Sonia, your turn. Yay. Okay. So I was just thinking, um, I was wondering if you've ever done like an a, a challenge online with people. Uh, because I saw this one thing going around Facebook the other day where people, the goal was to wear uh everything in your closet before you go back to the first thing that you wore um and i could almost if you if if you haven't i could picture you like if you have something you love in your closet and you don't know how to style it you know send me a picture and i'll help you and that gets people to start talking with you that's a great idea i do do um i do a a, a style challenge which i haven't consistently done but 
um, where we I pull a look off of Pinterest because Pinterest is like granimals for adults. I don't know if you guys remember granimals where you match the hippo with the hippo and then you hide your um, That's what I think Pinterest is to me. And so I will pull a look and then I'll say, okay, I want you to style it, look in your closet and try to match it. And if you can match it, then um, take a picture. And so then everybody starts doing it. It's pretty cool. And then I, by the end of the week, I share everybody's picture. And they get into it. So that's a great idea. That's something I will definitely write down. Thank cool. you. Thank you. All right. Come on up. I'm Gay Cole with uh, Legacy Family Documentaries. And uh, I think this is really cool what you're doing. I, I uh, have me and Oscar talking while we're sitting over there. That's my business partner right there. <laughs> Hello. And a way to market yourself or even like, build even more credibility, I think it would be interesting, especially if you're going to like women's groups saying, hey, this is what I do, mm -hmm. is maybe having some type of like monthly newsletter. Okay. Showing, saying like, I, how I, this is how I did it. And it's like, you have a newsletter, it sends out with the outfit that you put together. And it's like, this exemplifies this emotion, you know? Yeah, that's cool. And then it's, Clothing is emotion. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, this is, if you want to be confident, this is what, I'm, this is my particular. You know, oh, I like that. And then just sending that out to people. And then something else that I was thinking too is that, especially when you're talking about COVID, is I've never done them before, but I've seen them. It might be something you might maybe interested in looking into is like those, uh, it's like those boxes that come on a monthly basis that have yep. like outfits and stuff. Yep. Maybe looking into affiliate programs with them to say like, hey, I'm partnered with this company. Um, oh, so that yeah. they could... That's so a great you could idea. do some type of monthly package where they're getting clothes on a monthly basis, but it's you, you're putting it together. That's very cool. And I like that idea. There is something I've seen. Um, I have an app on my phone that my friend, uh, it's, I think it's called LTK. I have to look on my phone. But um, people will take, they will take a picture of what they're wearing and tag. And then that will send you to where I got the jacket or where I got the thing. Yeah, yeah. So it some, sounds very similar, but through a newsletter. Yeah, like even like on that. your website, like you can get, click those and there'll be links to your affiliate links. Or it's like, if you yeah. want to get this jacket. That would be something I would totally be interested in. Just yeah. got to like figure out how to do it. <laughs> For sure. Exactly. Yeah, that's great. I'll talk with you later because I have someone I want to get you in contact with. Okay, cool. Really Thank cool you. design. It's nice to meet you. Jason, do you want to share the idea you guys are calling on the chat? Which idea was that, Sue, or Lisa, about the, um, oh, because we're just going on what uh, what he uh, said about the newsletter and, um, you know, a lot of people are pulling their sweaters out of their closet for the first time now. So in the newsletter, you could have, you know, how to uh, snazz up your favorite sweater for this fall or something like that. Great idea. You know, with, you know, accessories or something like that. And just uh, also looking at your website, I definitely think you should have an about page with the story you just told us now on your site so people know why you do what you do so they can understand how this person really is, you know, has this passion and interest for that. And right. I'm also a big proponent of getting rid of uh, stock images on websites, uh, just out of <laughs> personal interest and uh, my own business interest. But um, that's my suggestion too. And maybe if they still do before and afters, if that's still allowed, I think that would be definitely something yeah, like that. that. And of course, get reviews right up on your site of your work uh, from other clients or start soliciting those reviews and have them write them on Google. So you start getting found. Okay. that way so i think the newsletter is good that's my only marketing is a newsletter and some small posts to social media and stuff like that too so i think okay. the newsletter would be a great way to go that's and um, yeah perfect and and yeah i do like the idea of the before and afters it's just something i'd have to talk to the client if they'd be willing to uh say yes to the before <laughs> even offer <laughs> a little bit of a discount on your service yeah, yeah. for the before and after to get those marketing materials yeah um Hi, Miriam again. Um, you guys need to hook up and do a legacy video for her about page. <laughs> oh, I'm wondering if your family is spectacular. And thank you. My great aunt used to get photographed for the paparazzi and family all the time. Too. Yeah. Isn't that great? Um, but the other thing was, I think you should pick up on the sustainability piece of it. Yeah, and that's really a big part. Either, either and or. <laughs> um, capsule wardrobes or yep. um, carrying how to style last year's fashion into this year's, you know, how to transition. So you get an extra year out of each piece. Well, and so here's the thing. I agree with that because 
uh, I know that they ran into an issue with fall clothing, mm -hmm. it's stuck on docks and in trans containers. And so you had all last year, so like things aren't moving, right? So one, shop consignment, mm -hmm. and two, shop in your closet, right? So I agree. I think all of those, um, and the email marketing is going to be brilliant for you because you also are in a business where it's, you can style them once, but then people can come back to you for a special occasion or the next transition. And yep. so you want to keep in touch with all your clients in a very positive way and all your potential clients. Too. Yeah. I, and I will tell you, um, I've worked with a lot of entrepreneurs and solopreneurs mm -hmm. um, in the fact that, uh, and they, they seem to know like they're, I have a, a, what I call a customized style story, which is four looks mm -hmm. that, what do you do? Mm -hmm. um, are you a presenter? So what are you gonna wear when you present? Um, are you meeting with clients? What are you gonna wear with, when you meet with clients, either Zoom or? Mm -hmm. So yes, I, I think we're on the right track. And that leads me to solopreneurs a lot of time, like me today, I have two meetings and a presentation, then I gotta go crawl around in someone's um, kitchen pantry where I'm gonna get dirty <laughs> and messy and yeah. I have a workout. So what, how can you transition an outfit through yeah. the day for different kinds of tasks? Oh, we could do that. Yep, I've cool. done that. Cool. Yep. Jessica, you. you have an idea. Would you like to share it? Just um, following on the idea of sustainability, there's a great website called ThreadUp, which is an online consignment. And I yep. just wonder if there's a way that you could partner with them or, or leverage that great opportunity to have such a, dirt, a breadth of clothing that you could make available to your clients. Yeah, that's cool. I've never done, I've never even, I don't, I've never even thought of that, but that, I mean, between you guys and, and this comment, that's something I'll be doing today mm -hmm. is looking into that for sure. That's cool. I like that idea. All right. Hi, I'm Michael McDonald. I'm a retired dude. Um, the, um, when I was a kid, there was a, a book that maybe a lot of people read it was Victor Frankl's A Man Search for Meaning. And it was about a fellow that was in a concentration camp. And he talked about how things were. One of the things he observed was that um, he could tell who was going to die by how they took care of themselves. If they were getting, if he got a cigarette instead of soap, if they didn't like fix their clothing, pull look out of themselves, that they were kind of on the death. When you think about that, it's like there's a thing about presenting yourself and making yourself public that makes you kind of says, I want to be alive and I want to be here. That's right. And that's what you're seeing. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if there's like something to like latch in on this post-COVID time when you might have forgotten about that. And like using your kind of uh, clothing therapy in a real way, right? You know, in a, and, and whether or not you're getting people that are seeking that, like I need to get out of COVID, I need to express my body, I need to dress and I need to then live into that thing, that the image that I want to get. Yeah, I have seen a few people that are like that. Um, and I'll get a little bit of resistance because COVID added this meant much weight. Mm -hmm. And I always, and one of the things I say is it's not about, I want you to embrace who you are. You can look, it's not about size, it's about fit. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a topic. I'm almost like, uh, it's, you're going into someone's inner sanctum, which is their clothes, mm -hmm. right? And then you're, you're talking to them and it, clothing is emotional. It's emotion hanging on a hanger whether you touch it or not touch it, or whether you put it on or you don't put it on. So there's a lot of therapy that kind of goes on before people put on their clothes. And you're right, it is about, am I gonna feel weird if I put this on and I go, like it stirs up emotions and feelings. And so that's something that I work with people uh, on and go, well, how do you wanna go attack this? Let's go attack the day. And let's, what, let's put on clothes that make you feel comfortable and then you can gradually build up from that. So maybe maybe some of that in your marketing. Yeah, that's stuff. a great idea. Because we're all, we're all I feel like we're coming out of COVID and we're all feeling that. The yuck. Right. Great idea. So yes, uh, Roberto Sim to Diego's. Uh, my suggestion is uh, we work with pets. That's what we do. So we see a lot of people who love their pets like crazy. Yeah, I'm sure there's I'm a lot of them over here. Yes, I'm right here. Yeah. Uh, you know, so I right. thought that I, you know, I had is having that type of uh, match the person with the pet. Right now with the holidays and any holiday that happens, 
people <laughs> are that's perfect so you know just a thought that i had that you know uh pets are a huge part of everybody's life yeah uh people put a lot of effort money energy into it yep. uh, and it's something that if you find something very specific for that you know the process great idea. The so, so i will tell you i've been teasing my husband for like a, a couple weeks now going we're all because i have a i have a boxer pit and I'm like, we're all getting matching pajamas for Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, he's exactly. like, he's just like, so, oh. yep. so yeah. So it's been my joke, but I do get it. I mean, I want to match my dog. And you know, a lot of people, I mean, we get people who they for Halloween, I mean, you see that. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I just, host, I was the MC for uh, uh, Howl and Growl over at uh, Best Perfect. Nice. And they, uh, yeah, they all were in. Time. They were it's, in. It so, is. yeah, I get it. So, I love that. That's a great yeah. idea. Good luck. Thank you. Do you have another thought that I see? Uh, I just wanted to say that this is probably the most chatter I've ever seen on a subject in a long time, which means that you're going down the right path. This is an emotional thing, and everybody seems to be able to relate to what you're doing. So, I think. Um, I just want to say good luck. And if you, you need some support, I'm happy to help you with the outreach. Thank you so much. Going off of what Michael said, I feel like humanity is kind of in a weird place. Like you see people wearing pajamas to go to Walmart and stuff, yes. you know? I feel like if we can start trying to be like your mom, that maybe it's going to be contagious. Maybe someone wearing their pajamas is like, maybe I shouldn't wear pajamas. Maybe I should try and dress like a classy woman, you know? Right. I, I have, um, when I meet with people, we do, um, I do connect with people and they know they're going to meet with me. They will dress up and they'll tell me I dressed up for you. And I'm like, oh, that's so great. You didn't have to do that. But, you know, like it kind of sets the tone of like, oh. and, uh, but then I ask them, how do you feel? I feel good. Well, then you should keep doing it. And then maybe yeah. their friends will see. Yeah. And coworkers. So. Yeah. Thank you. That's great. And making the world more beautiful. Oh, thank you. That makes me feel good. <laughs> well, I've certainly always been a believer in uh, first impressions <laughs> and, and <laughs> dressing for work and all of that. I think it's really important. And who doesn't love a man, a well dressed man? I mean, that was the first thing that caught my eye with Johnny. Like, oh, there's a guy in Albuquerque who actually wears button ups and ties. Are you kidding me? Yeah, it's not beautiful. Cool. Amazing. I, so I had a client that he was like telling me he's single. He was getting close uh, for a job. And I was telling him, well, you know, I, I'm being nosy. I'm asking all questions. Do you date? Are you, are you married? What's your story? And so um, he was like, oh, dating is so awful here because if you dress better than the date, they're offended. I'm like, what? Yeah, yeah. I, dress, I can't. And he was like, no, you don't understand. I could not wrap my, I'm 30, I'm, I'm 20 years older than him. And he just was like, you don't understand. I'm like, I just don't get that. So, you know, it is, it does make you feel, well, that's his perception. And, you know, his perception is his reality. I, yeah. I don't think I would feel that way, but, uh, but yeah, that's interesting. Well, and I'm like, who are you? Who are you? Who are you getting to go on a page? <laughs> because that's not your person. So, All right. Um, we have two questions. Okay. Uh, uh, the first question is red or green? Uh, Christmas. Okay. Awesome. And what's the one thing that this community can do for you? Oh my gosh, you guys have done so much already. I, I, uh, from what I heard today, I think I'm on my way. So yeah, That's I can't think of anything. Yeah. Great. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. Yes, you're very welcome. Um, so thank you, Mercedes. Chat conversation and your video will be on. Okay, thank you. I think we have some new faces here. So before we call up maybe some newbies to introduce themselves, um, Eric and I made an executive decision this morning that we will not be meeting the week of Thanksgiving. So uh, the, the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, we'll go ahead and take off. We don't have a lot of presenters anyway, so we need to fill up the queue. So if any of you out here have been considering, maybe it's my turn to get up here and tell my story. Um, please talk to one of us and we'll help you get registered because we'd love to hear your story. And, and if you know people, obviously spread the word. And if you have ideas for, you know, more community sessions or group talk that we can do in support of the community, then let us know because we're always happy to change things up. Do we have any newbies here today? I see a couple of people I've never seen here before. Come on up. 
Scott Jeffries. Come on up in front of the camera. Yeah, introduce yourself to the audience. All the way over there. All the way. Yeah. I'm uh, Scott Jeffries from Rio Grande Credit Union. I uh, brought along Damien Dorado over there. So I used to come to these uh, before COVID. Nice. It's been a while, so coming on back. We're so glad that you're here. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. You probably meet lots of entrepreneurs who oh, could yes. present here. Hi. Hi. Good morning. Uh, you were wonderful. Thank you. Oh, uh, my name is Jill Avey, and I'm with Southwestern HR Consulting. We're a, a consulting firm that supports businesses with HR practices that might not have an HR person in place or that has an overtasked HR person. So it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I don't think I see anybody new online. So how about big wins? Anybody have a big win that they want to share or somebody that you'd like to thank? I'll do it. Well, hey, while you're up here, let's announce yeah. your workshop. All right. Tomorrow. So two things. <laughs> uh, tomorrow here at 11.30, tell about one, we're doing a brown bag lunch and learn thing. Me and Sonia and Ingla are doing a, a session on how to pick a coach and what coaching is and how it will help you in your business. So register for that. Where's the, where's the link? Um, well, you can get it on the right. Fat Pipe ADQ website, which will take you to Eventbrite to um, register. And it's free. Just bring your lunch and yeah. join us. It's fun. We've had a good time putting it together. And so hopefully we'll get a bunch of you in here. Um, but then a win I have is also kind of a thank you here. Um, for years, Tamara Thorpe was a regular here with with me, and she has recently been working with a group that does a lot of DEI trainings and things. And I've been working with her on some of that. And I have I got asked to do a presentation for their whole company today, so I will be online presenting to about fifty people in a wellness situation. And it's all because I know Tamara from here. Do Do you uh, know Tamara's pet peeve with fashion? Oh, there's so many, uh, but uh, there is one. one Dinkley. I know, I know it. It's just no like, yoga pants oh, in right. the grocery store. Right. <laughs> exactly. She Never. She always dresses really well. So. <laughs> All right. So um, my big win for the people that were in here a few weeks back, um, I announced that my friend in Arizona is pregnant. She just found out yesterday that it's going to be a girl. Yay! No. <laughs> Hi, Oscar. My mom loves you, by the way. Oh, awesome. You would say how she was like. Yeah, we love her too. She was so fun. So that's actually what we want to talk about. We uh, Our big wins were our proof of concept videos are going really well. So if you guys didn't know, we're making proof of concept videos for people that are interested in getting a documentary done um, or just interested in the concept itself. So um, yeah, we got a few of them in the works and they're looking really good so far. It was really fun. Got to meet Lisa's mama and she was amazing. Um, we did one for Michelle as well, so she's back there and it's coming out pretty great. And people, will you be publishing those? To some people? Absolutely, we'll definitely bring them here so you guys can watch, but we'll have them posted on our website. He may have gotten a customer too, because my dad is intrigued. He's like, I'd kind of like to have a video done. So <laughs> <laughs> like, dad, it's your pocketbook, go for it, man, I love it. Yeah, it so it's a good, it's a good approach. Yeah, absolutely. And then the second one is, well, tomorrow we're going to be presenting at the start of PSS. We're excited about that. You guys going to start a PSS? I don't think there's many tickets left, so if you haven't registered, you better, better get one. Jenny, how'd your opening go? It's this Friday. Okay. This Friday from 5 to 7 p.m. at 1408 Lomas Boulevard Northwest. I'm going to have a grand opening for my clinic. I'd love to see any of you around. What what kinds of things can you expect at a grand opening for occupational therapy? I will say there's going to be some raffle games and treats. Okay. It's going to be fun. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody online? All right. Well, that's um, yay, Eric. And then well, I, it's, it's not, well, is it a win? Is it a win? And then you can close this out. I would be glad to close it. I'm just using this, this Microsoft stuff and it's just killing me. Um, I'll train you. Should you know to bring this darn window? <laughs> See, this is this is tech support like online right in front of everybody. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, it's weird. Oh, there, 
I have to make sure that I don't touch my computer except <laughs> to hold it. Uh, so uh, GW Global Entrepreneurship Week is happening all around the state. Their events and activities are already on the calendar. I wanted to highlight some of the activities that are taking place here in the Albuquerque area, but there's a ton online if you go to the national site, and or the, I'm sorry, it's a global site. Um, you can see all sorts of stuff around the world. There are fantastic online events that are happening. Most of it, the official week starts Monday, but there's, like I say, there's activities that are starting already. Some of the things that are on that site, I'll try and hit the highlights. A lot of them have something to do with our little family, our community here at Lone Lane Cubs. So they include, be a better you, hire a coach. Who's, whose yeah. line was that? There was the, that was part of the brainstorming to come up with a be a better you, right? Yeah. Fantastic. Love it. So we've already mentioned that. That's great. We've already talked a little bit about Startup Fiesta and Startup Showcase. I happen to know that there's about four or five folks who are associated with One Million Cups that are also pitching there or presenting there. So that's fantastic. Um, but as Lisa mentioned, there's there are probably like two tickets left. <laughs> so make sure to go online afterwards. I'll try and put it maybe in the chat, but I'll also put it on the social media for One Million Cups. Uh, Erica Ferns, she talked about the prom, uh, Profit Summit that's coming up this weekend, actually on the 11th. So that starts on Friday. We've got a few events from Fundaxi in the area. Hyperdrive Space Summit, that takes place next Tuesday through Thursday. Basically, aerospace is a big deal, especially throughout New Mexico, but in the Albuquerque area with CNN Ingenuity, AFRL, and others. They've got a really cool lineup that I've only barely touched on. If you're more in the nonprofit world, Roundworks New Mexico is having their first big summit. Uh, and that's actually this year, that's taking place next Wednesday through Friday. Um, let's see, I'll mention, let's see, if you wanna meet the, the movers and shakers and whatever's in, in um, economic development in the Albuquerque area, the Albuquerque region area, the former Albuquerque Economic Development, they're doing a big um, 505 awards and annual dinner. That's coming next Thursday. And there's a few other fantastic things that are happening around town. So just good examples of how the community comes together, promotes each other, tries to lift each other up. And, and that's what Global Entrepreneurship Week is about. If you want to host an event, <laughs> you get one of these, one of these little buttons that I've got here. You know, so we have a few of those if you want to be one of the few proud folks who, who carries those. Now, having said all that, I seem to recall that Lisa asked me if I might be able to wrap things up. And I already talked a little bit about community, but Wait, it's Eric, really can, I, can I interrupt you for one second? There's one other event I wanted to mention. Oh, uh, sure, sure, go for it. Okay, Arrowhead Center has their We Mean Business. It's a free virtual conference. Or if you can make it into Las Cruces in the evening, they have a uh, an, an in-person sort of networking event. Um, so go to arrowheadcenter.org and look at events and you can sign up for We Mean Business. And when is that running? Is that next week or is that this week? That is next Thursday, right? right. Hold on. Let me <laughs> let me double check my calendar so I'm not giving you guys the wrong information. Um, and the good news is I'm a presenter in one of the panels. So awesome. yeah, okay. I'm sorry. It's this Thursday, the 17th from one to five. There you go. That's next Thursday. Oh my gosh. Next You're Thursday. You're living in the future there, Sonia. Oh my God. All right. No, that, that, that's great. Yeah, We Mean Business is a great event. So um, the fact that they're doing it sort of hybrid is good. And I think one of the things that other that also talks about, put this down for a second, so I don't screw anything else up there, but is, um, you know, it's also a statewide community. Um, we are a big state with a fairly small population. If we're not all working together, it doesn't really, really work. So we're just thankful for having a strong community here in Albuquerque. Lisa's part of you know, several different communities around the state, so am I, a bunch of you are as well. And it's just the more that we can share um, the importance of working together and the importance of entrepreneurship, the better it is for all, for all of us. So I wanna thank you. I'm glad that we're skipping uh, Thanksgiving week and we hope to see you all again next week. Thanks yeah, so much. Yeah, we'll be here next week, so show up. Thank you.